Happy Valentine's Day, my beautiful people, and welcome to another episode of the Dino Basics, where we dig up the basics on some of our favorite deceased beasts. My name is Logan, and today, I thought I'd bring you all a bonus video for this day of love. For one, because I'm single and had nothing better to do, but also, of course, I love you guys. Now, no, no, no. I've done my fair share of cringe on this channel, but I, no, I'm not stooping that low. What dinosaur better represents love than the motherly hadrosaur? Let's look into the basics of Myasaura. The earliest remains of Myasaura were first discovered in 1978 by American fossil collector Lori Trexler. These remains were recovered in the modern-day United States, specifically the state of Montana in the Two Medicine Rock Formation. Following this discovery, paleontologist Marion Branvold would make a miraculous find, the presence of almost 15 juvenile skeletons as well as a nest full of eggs and embryos, all seemingly being the same genus as the original fossil. If this assumption was correct, this would be the first example of parental social behavior in dinosaurs ever, significantly restructuring how we view dinosaurs and their relationship to their young. A year later, in 1979, the original fossil discovered by Lori Trexler would be described by paleontologists Jack Horner and Robert McKella as a new genus and species called Myasaura peeblesaurum. This site at the Two Medicine Rock Formation would turn out to be a goldmine for fossils of both grown adult dinosaurs, including mature Myasaura, as well as fossilized eggs. These eggs were mostly Myasaura, but other genera, like Troodon and Orodromius, also had identified nests near the site, leading to this excavation site being nicknamed Egg Mountain. The name Myasaura can be broken into two parts. Maya is in reference to the Greek mythological character Maya, a nymph often honored as the good mother of Olympus. So good that she would give birth to the god Hermes, who immediately upon birth murdered a random tortoise so he could turn its shell and some cow intestines into a harp and would later be known as the god of thieves and troublemakers. She was a good mother. I didn't say she was good at mothering. In keeping with this motherly theme, Sora stems from the feminine form of the Greek word Soros, having the entire name roughly translate to Good Mother Lizard. The species name Peeblesaurum was chosen to honor the families of John and James Peebles, who owned the land that Myasaura was originally discovered on. Myasaura belonged to the bird-hipped Ornithischian group, and more specifically, was a member of the Hadrosauridae family. We've previously discussed individual hadrosaurs, like the crescent-crested Corythosaurus, as well as the trumpet-headed Parasaurolophus, and even covered hadrosaurs as a family in full on another Dino Basics episode. Without getting into the weeds, the hadrosaurs or duck-billed dinosaurs were an extremely common grouping of dinosaurs that first appeared somewhere in the Cretaceous period, and by the end of the Cretaceous period, had become one of the most dominant and widespread herbivorous family of dinosaurs on our planet. Within this family, Myasaura belonged to the Saurolophinae subfamily, often just regarded as the non-crested hadrosaurs, obviously due to their lack of head crests. Myasaura was a fairly large hadrosaur, able to reach about 30 feet or 10 meters in length, and reach almost 8 feet or 3 meters in height. At this size, Myasaura probably would have weighed around 3 to 4 tons. Returning to the nesting behavior of Myasaura, the hatchlings discovered at the site were believed to all be under one year in age, ranging in lengths from 1 foot or 40 centimeters to 5 feet or 150 centimeters, depending on exact age. Their close proximity to the nest seemed to indicate that Myasaura young would live near the nest for a considerable amount of time, relying on their parents for food and protection. 
this parental behavior was revolutionary for the time. Modern media has normalized the idea that dinosaurs could be nurturing parents. But upon Myasaurus' discovery in the mid-1900s, dinosaurs were still seen as lumbering, low-intellect lizards. Complex social behaviors, like nurturing young, had never been seen in fossil records. However, with direct evidence in the form of Myasaura, paleontologists were challenged on preconceptions of dinosaur behavior. Following this, additional dinosaurs, like the quote-unquote egg thief, Ovaraptor, and the small carnivore, Troodon, would be discovered also exhibiting parental care, providing further evidence into the love dinosaurs could express. Aww. Although it was probably more for the natural instinct to ensure the survival of their genes, but we don't have to talk about that. Let's enjoy the moment. Once again returning to the adults, Myasaur would have had a large skull, ending in their signature duck-billed mouths. These mouths were packed with hundreds of flattened teeth, with thousands more ready to take their place. This vast array of teeth allowed Myasaura and many other hadrosaurs to efficiently grind vegetation to support their massive body weight, most likely giving them an edge when competing with other herbivores. Now, remember when I mentioned that as a Sauralophanae member, Myasaura had no head crest? Well, I actually lied. Kind of. Myasaura had a short, solid crest just above their eyes, significantly different from the hollow and ornate crests of the Lambiosaurinae. This crest was most likely used for intraspecies fighting, allowing them to headbutt rivals for the right to mate. The overall body structure of Myasaura was very similar to other hadrosaurs. Their body was heavily built, supported by two smaller front legs and two larger hind limbs. Based on these sizes, it is likely Myasaura would be able to rear up onto their hind limbs, ideally to reach for food or possibly run faster over short distances. However, due to their heavy weight, Myasaura would more often than not be walking on all fours, especially when grazing or trotting at a slower speed. Their body was ended by a thick, powerful tail. This tail would counterbalance its body, but also could be used in combat as a blunt weapon. Myasaura would have lived during the late Cretaceous, about 76 million years ago. Fossils indicate that Myasaura would have lived throughout North America, particularly in the U.S. state of Montana, as well as the Canadian province of Alberta. It most likely would have lived alongside a variety of herbivores, including ceratopsians like the Chasmosaurus, fleet-footed theropods like the Struthiomimus, as well as other hadrosaurs like the Parasaurolophus. Based on the large number of fossils found near one another, it is very likely Myasaura would have lived in herds for protection, with some estimates believing they could reach numbers of almost 10,000 individuals. These herds would eventually settle down to form nesting colonies, packing together nests to raise young close to one another and provide protection in numbers. Each nest would be filled with approximately 30 to 40 eggs, and then be covered in a light layer of debris to provide warmth. For the young living in these nests, this time of their lives would be their most vulnerable, with small carnivores like the Dromaeosaurus easily able to pick off young or steal eggs when parents are not looking. For adults, Daspletosaurus would have been the apex predator of their environment, able to overpower Myasaura with their incredible biting force. Myasaura most likely would rely on the protection of numbers, as well as their moderate speed to escape danger. But if necessary, their large bodies and powerful tails could be used to ward off attackers. Despite competing with a number of other hadrosaurs, Myasaur has been able to maintain a consistent presence in pop culture. This includes a wide range of media, like video games, including 2015's Jurassic World Evolution, as well as its 2021 sequel, documentaries like 2003's Dinosaur Planet, and 2023's Life on Our Planet, and in television shows, 
including 2007's Land Before Time, 2009's Dinosaur Train, and have his own dedicated episode in 2005's Go Diego Go, where we learn important facts like Myasaur lays eggs in nests, not water, Myasaur cannot fly because gravity, and of course, Myasaur eats leaves, not bologna sandwiches. You wasted 10 minutes of your life when the Go Diego Go wiki just taught you everything you needed to know in three sentences. The Myasaur is a crucial dinosaur to our understanding of ancient life. While similar to many of its peers in shape and size, what this beast has taught us and how it lived has forever changed how we perceive dinosaurs today. From mindless killing machines to sentient animals capable of raising the next generation. And in my eyes, that makes this dinosaur my, uh, valentine. My life is sad. That's gonna do it for this episode. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed. Be sure to leave a comment below what you think of Myasaurah and if you've heard of this dinosaur before the video. Finding a dinosaur related to love was weirdly hard. I was hoping to use this dinosaur for Mother's Day, but oh well, sorry mom. This Friday, we'll be traveling to the Jurassic to study one of the earliest European monarchs, the apex predator, Torvosaurus. Thank you for your support, and see you in the next video.